Welcome to the podcast, episode four, Spiritual Leadership Simplified. We'll get into that. Some of you are listening, you're like, I'm not even sure about those words, spiritual leadership. And I'll tell you why that you might not even realize it, but why that might tug at you in a weird way. We'll talk about that in a little bit. First of all, thanks so much for being part of the Resolute Man movement. Uh, if you've listened to the ep first episodes, thank you. What is a man was one. Two was the art of clear thinking. Episode three, accelerating change requires decisiveness. And now here we are in episode four. By the way, reviews really help. Make sure you do that on Apple or Google. Written reviews, five-star reviews helps get the algorithms going and the uh, the the podcast further out there. Also, BeCourageousMinistry.org is our organization that puts this free resource out there along other things. If you want to switch where you spend money, you can buy coffee, Be Courageous coffee, hats, shirts, and mugs, support the movement and support what we're doing. That would be amazing. Also, I don't know if you know, we have another podcast, Courageous Parenting. It's a whole new ball game, being a dad, and that will absolutely help you. I do that with my wife on a weekly basis. Now, for some, you hear the phrase spiritual leadership and you think of your pastor. Others, you hear it and you want to grow in this area. And others, I think most Christian men might be here, it actually becomes a negative feeling inside. You hear this expectation at times, but it feels so daunting. You get this feeling inside of inferiority maybe or confusion of what that even really looks like. What does spiritual leadership in the home really look like? And most likely, you've never seen it done before. You might also have feelings that it's impossible because your wife is so strong. How would I lead her in this area? After all, she has time during the day to grow spiritually, listen to pastor's podcasts. She shares what she's learning. And some of you may even cave a little when this happens inside while appearing to be positive. You may be finding it hard to get any alone time in the word even, let alone time to be prepared to lead spiritually, whatever that means. Well, we hope to simplify this and give it a good meaning that's encouraging. Hey, we're all in different places, but I can tell you I've been in every one of those places. I became a believer at age 23, married at 24 to a strong Christian that was doing international missions, smuggling Bibles into countries where they weren't allowed. Someone with a photographic memory, an avid reader with the gift of teaching. That's my wife, Angie. She's been that way since I met her, and it's amazing. But brother, I'm here to say, be encouraged because God wants you to be who he made you to be. You don't have to be like me, your pastor, or any other man to grow as a spiritual leader in your family. The hardest thing to be is someone other than yourself. The world needs you, the full you. More importantly, your family needs the full you. If you are a family man, he gave you your bride and your children. You are their dad, your children's dad, right? It was meant to be, and we are called to lead our families by being fully ourselves while yielded to the Holy Spirit. So what does spiritual leadership look like in a home? Good question. The simple answer is your example and words at times point your family to Jesus and knowing God. I love that. It's not giving a sermon necessarily. It's not knowing everything the Bible says, and it's not trying to become like the podcasters and mega pastors out there. I believe there's more power in you reading one sentence from Proverbs to your family and discussing it than them listening to a polished sermon online. Why? Because you're their dad. You're her husband. You are the God-authorized leader of your family. That's awesome. Be encouraged by that. One of the greatest mistakes leaders make is forgetting how influential they actually are. Don't make that mistake. So again, let's really explore this question. What does spiritual leadership look like in a home? Here you go. You ready? Pray for your wife and children. Long ago, I read this book by Henry Blackaby called Spiritual Leadership. It's very good. You should get it. He said something like, the most important thing a leader can do is get on their knees and pray for those they are leading. Wow. That was counterintuitive. I didn't expect that. That was amazing, actually. I think the book was probably for pastors. I'm not sure. It's been a long time. But I was reading it to improve my leadership in my work and also with my family. Spiritual leadership sounds like action and knowing things. But the most important thing is to pray for my people. 
That was encouraging to me. I can do that. This is so much more powerful than you might think, including God to help your family and turning your heart specifically towards the uniqueness of those you lead in your home. That's amazing. That alters for the better how you approach your spiritual leadership. Secondly, read Christian books to your children at bedtime. There are so many great resources out there, and you want your children to remember you reading to them. It's a very special thing that can lead to deep and rich conversations. The third thing is to teach scripture to your family. Now, don't be alarmed by that if you haven't done it, but Proverbs is your friend. Other books are great too, but Proverbs is clear and simple. For example, Proverbs 1, 8 through 9 says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. Such a clear thing you could discuss with your family and doesn't take time, much time at all. Proverbs 2, 6 through 7 says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. And you could teach what the word integrity means. So many rich conversations can come from that. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. See, You've probably heard that before, but that's such a great discussion at breakfast or dinner. They're so easy to understand in Proverbs. Read it to them, share something about them, and ask one simple question. It doesn't take long at all. The fourth thing is pray with your wife. That's special and important, helps your marriage. And the fifth thing is be available for spiritual questions. Now, you don't have to know the answer. It's okay. You can always say, that's a good question. Let's look it up together. We don't need to know everything. If you don't rise up to be the spiritual leader, your wife will likely try and fill the cracks that, and you know what? She should do that. But without your influence too, it's not complete. It's not what God intended. While it's good for your wife to teach the Bible, pray, and disciple your children, it doesn't mean things are covered. It's special when mom does it. And it's special when dad does it too. And when both are doing it, it's complete. But if dad doesn't do it, it's problematic. You are supposed to do it. God wants you to do it. So here's an example. If your back is out and you're told to do certain stretches to get better, are you going to do it? Of course you are. The pain is too much. And the promise of no pain again is worthy. See, the problem with family life is you don't feel the deep pain of your neglect while the children are young. But too often the pain arrives way down the road. So we have to think about this. We have to get present and intentional about what we're doing. Then you might say down the road, I wish I rejected my inner passivity and led spiritually, or I wish I did less escapism on my phone, or I wish I wasn't so self-absorbed my own passions that don't involve the family and was there reading scripture and praying with my family. All these dollars don't mean too much now. I wish I didn't make excuses and actually followed through in sharing scripture during meals with my family and was there more. Gents, These aren't ordinary times. These are extraordinary times of great change, and much of the change is rooted in evil. Your spiritual leadership is desperately needed. It's not the same ballgame. You have to listen to episode two, by the way, The Art of Clear Thinking, to fully understand the depth of this and get to your best thinking. But too many do incrementally better than their own experience. But what if that's not good enough, that incremental thinking and improvement? How much have things changed in just the last five years? What will the world be like in seven to 10 years when your children likely are launching into the world? What level of spiritual maturity will be needed to stand firm in the faith despite real persecution beyond today? Part of the reason this might be hard for some is you may know God, but are you actually yielded to him? Are you growing your relationship with him? Are you tapped in daily to his truth? Do you value the Bible? And most are going to say, of course I do. Well, I know we all find times for the things we value most. Words are empty if actions don't follow. So do we really value the Bible? It really can be as simple as praying, reading, discussing, and available for spiritual questions. Those are the only things I suggested. So can you do more? Is there, could there be more to it? Sure. But there doesn't have to be. There can be. But nothing I share will matter if these basic things aren't already flowing. You are the spiritual leader of your home. Whether you rise up to that title or not, that's what you are. 
Let's rise up. Let's be willing to be uncomfortable for the spiritual good of our homes, those we love the most. Let's have conversations with our wives about our desire to lead spiritually and ask for their support and encouragement as well. At the end of the day, what matters most? The spiritual condition and well-being of your family, right? So let's put our actions where our hearts truly are and reject passivity so we can love well, stand for truth, and lead in our homes. You are a resolute man, and your influence is required during these unprecedented times. Revere God and fear nothing in this world so you can better lead your family, make a difference, and encourage others. Get your free Resolute Manifesto at ResoluteMan.com. The movement is growing as we reject passivity to love well, stand for truth, and lead unapologetically. Thanks for listening. And if you love this episode, please share it.